continuous volume calculation in ferrocene. Today I will show you how to create continuous volume calculation in ferrocene using ferrocene and the respective volume calculation app. For this I created a project and this project consists of five clusters and each cluster has two scans. You can think about every cluster here can represent also one day. So we have the first day and when we just visualize it, make it visible, you see it's now empty. Those are the two scans nothing really much going on. If you go now to day two, there's already a small volume going on here. And if you go to day three, it gets more. Then to day four, it's got even bigger. And last but not least, day five. And just from eyeballing, I think day five might be bigger than day four, but we don't know for sure. And this is why we now will calculate this using the apps. To have a common base for our calculation, we first will now create here a plane which will serve as the ground play for all coming scans and for this I use now volume 1 which is of course empty and we choose here mark plane click one here and scene is now generating us the plane which will then serve as the base when we have now a look at the volume calculation app you can find it here in the app tab then we see the volume calculation app allows us to create volume based on arbitrary scan points. So just the scan points we click, the one from a selected area measurement. This is interesting. We'll have a look, closer look afterwards. And we can also by defining the base in the selected plane. Now, if it, I would only measure one time, of course, I would use this one. So I just choose the plane and then define my points around. But because I want to repetitively measure the same area, I want to have one area measurement as a base and always choose this as the beginning of my volume measurement to make sure all of those volumes here are measured from the same base. So for this, we first must create an area measurement. So let's do this now. To go, we go to the area measurement and we see we can now start the area measurement for arbitrary scan points. Again, I don't want to do this now because I have here already created my plane and I want to start the area measurement using points from the selected plane. At the moment, I have not selected my plane, so I go down here to my structure tab and find here my plane. When I select it, you see the pattern gets much bigger. And now I can start the area measurement using the points from the selected plane. Now, to catch the best points we want, of course, there's a small trick. We switch to the orthographic view and then look from the top. So we see exactly how our volume lies down here. Now, I made a few tests before and I found out that when we want to make this continuous volume calculation, one of the best thing is that along a wall that you just make very very small points so you check along this line and i know i don't catch them now 100 percent on the sub millimeter accuracy but i just capture here a lot of points because the more points you have the better your result will be afterwards okay and i tried it a few times uh, being more sloppy or more accurate and the difference in the end was 0.0, .0 one cubic meter so it did not have so much effect but now i create this area measurement and of course it doesn't tell us much it is just the beginning for the volume measurement now to start the volume measurement i would first change our perspective and have a look to the volume two because again volume one is empty so we go to volume two and this is how it looks like. And I want to start now a volume measurement from it. So go to start volume measurement based on the selected area measurement. Again, I need to select it first. So we go down to the measurements areas. We find the area measurement selected and then go start volume measurement based on selected area measurement. Click it. And now we have the option to just change the height of it using this arrow. We also have some tool tips down in the bottom and I'm happy now with it. Click enter and it asks me if I want to create a volume of the mesh or of the frame. Of course I want to get it from the mesh. And now it tells me that I should also load the scans first. So what we know is 
When we want to create the volume measurement, we first must select the base, in that case the area, and we also must make sure that we loaded the scans here. And I will always load the scans for the respective cluster. I will not load all of the scans together, just to make sure the algorithm is not getting confused. So let's do this now. Just hit OK. You see the volume stays here, and then go under Load All Scans. The scans are loaded. Now we just again hit the enter button and it asks me to create the volume of a mesh. I say yes and here is my mesh. You might now be tempted to say yeah that looks good but what is with all the spikes over here? And of course we have built in a edit function to edit those mesh. What we can do is we can just make this invisible. Now we see the spikes much better and we must select now the volume first and then we can go under the apps tab and find the volume measurement app and it did the selected volume measurement. Now we can just go and select those spikes here and we can either go with the right click and go on the selection and say remove points and smooth selected region or we can just click the X button and repeat this until we are happy. This is not the only function we have, of course. There's also a second function in build, which is to refine the mesh. When we say we want to have a mesh with a little bit more edges and vertices, for this we just go and increase the resolution to refine the mesh. So, and we see this has some influence on the total volume. When I decrease it, you see it changing, but it's in the 0 0.00 one cubic meter region so it is not giving that much effect but it can help to clarify uncertainties when you can just refine it so that's this should be the last cleanup here and let's see now volume two again in comparison this looks really like the one we want to have then we just hit the enter button to finish our edits and now this is our final volume. We rename it and say view are now v2 to give it one clear name. From now on I will just speed up the video a little and then calculate also the volume for all other parts. This gives us of course now time for a short repetition. So we are unloading all of the scans, then we load the cluster we want to create the volume measurement from, select the area measurement, go to the volume measurement app, make a volume measurement out of this area measurement. Once we finish this for all clusters, we then edit the single volume measurements until we are happy with them. And once we finish this for all of them, we can continue to bring the data together into one report. Now the last part is of course to use the data we created to generate a report. For this I just go and open all my volumes, the properties, so I have them here and I have prepared in Excel already one table we can fill in the data so let's order it here so we have here v5 v4 v3 and v2 now we know that v1 is zero so let's just copy paste this again i will just speed it up and as an end of course we can create now a line chart to show how it should look like so we just select this add a line chart and our initial question was of course which day have we been the most productive and we were not sure from by just looking at the data if it was now day four or day five and we see now in our volume tracker yes the most productive we've been on day four and with this we are at the end of our tutorial I hope you had some fun and let's see you in the next one. Bye.